one in applying for express entry. So step one in applying for express entry is to find out if you're eligible. Now the Canadian government website makes this very easy for you because there is a quiz that you can take which can tell you if you're eligible for express entry. So instead of me just talking and blabbing away, let's head over to the computer so we can do it together for you all to see exactly what I'm talking about. Alrighty, we're on our computer. So this is the Canada.ca government website. So you can see here it's Government of Canada. This is the only website that you should trust all the information and use. All right, so on the home page, it will ask you if you want service in English or French. I'm an English speaker, so English. Okay, so on this main page here, we are seeking to immigrate. So we will click here, immigration and citizenship. Okay, so then it will bring us to this page with services and information, and we're going to select immigrate. Okay. So under immigrates, right now we are talking about express entry, so we select express entry. Okay, so in order to find the eligibility quiz, you have to go here under how express entry works. So we click that. Okay, so step one, find out if you're eligible right there for you. So there are two ways that you can find out if you're eligible. You can answer the questions in a questionnaire or you can actually sit down there and read all the requirements we ain't gonna do that we're just gonna select the questionnaire so click here now in this questionnaire they're going to ask you some information about an english language test um your knock code um how many people you're bringing and other stuff like that so basically we're going to put hypothetical information in here or things that we think we're going to achieve because in steps two and three, which I'll explain later on, I'm going to explain the English language test, which you're going to have to put some hypothetical or arbitrary figures in this questionnaire for. All right. So it's going to give you a little breakdown of the eligibility questionnaire and tell you what information is going to basically ask of you, your nationality, age, family members, education, blah, blah, blah. All right. So we're going to go here, check your eligibility. First question, it will ask you which province or territory do you plan to live in? Here you can select whichever province you want to live in. Don't worry, this selection is not like a final selection. You can, you, when you go to apply for your actual express entry, you can select all provinces or one province You can and you can change whatever you enter here. Nothing is going to like be final. It's not a final thing. Okay, so here I'm going to select Alberta because Alberta is an affordable province where I can make and save money and earn money without having to spend too much on accommodation and rent and stuff like that. So select your province, then we go next. Canada's official languages are English and French. It's going to ask you for the results. <laughs> from your English or French test that you have that you have to take. Now I will explain in, in the next video about these um, language tests, but for now we're just going to enter some arbitrary figures, right? So it's going to tell you, you need to submit the language test results for all programs on the express entry, even if English or French is your first language. So it's going to ask you, which language test did you take? These are the various tests that are available. The IELTS and the CELPIP is, is for English language tests. The TEF and the TCF is for French. Okay, so we're just going to select any one of the English language ones. So I'm going to select IELTS, go next. We're going to ask you what date did you take the test? Just enter any arbitrary date that has passed already. For example, we're going to say February 4th, 2021, we go next. Then it's going to ask you for your results of that test. Now, if you select the drop down here, it's going to give you the highest score that you can achieve down to the lowest, okay? So right now we're just gonna be in the top. We're gonna <laughs> arbitrarily select the highest scores because we are native English language speakers. We should get great scores on these tests once we research exactly what the tests are about. So 
just select some arbitrary figures here then you select next then it will ask you do you have other language results this is where you would select if you speak french for any of these two um french tests but i do not speak french i'm gonna say none next then it will ask you in the last three years how many years of skill work experience do you have in canada you must have been full-time i do not have any work experience in canada so i'm gonna say no of course if you have work experience in canada you can say yes now it's going to ask you during this period which national occupation classification level is most of the experience in now this NOC code or national occupation classification is basically various codes for different occupations which i will explain in another video but for now you can make a selection based on what occupation you have or what professional level so NOC codes are based on these three levels zero is for managerial occupations b is for technical occupations and skill trades and a is for professional occupations so whichever occupation that you feel your particular job falls in then you can select it here okay so i'm gonna go ahead and select professional occupations if you do a skill trade electric like electricals or constructions or stuff like that then you can select b if you're if you're a manager then you can select type o but i'm gonna select a for my occupation Next, it's going to ask you in the last 10 years, how many years of skilled work experience do you have? Now, this is asking about the experience that you have working over the lifetime of your work. <laughs> what? So this is where it's going to ask you in the last 10 years, how many years of skilled work experience do you have? So you're going to select how much skilled work experience that you have working in Dominica or whichever country that you're from. So we're going to go six or more or if you work less than one year, two years, whatever is the case, you select it here. And then it's going to ask you in the last five years, do you have at least two years of experience in one of these type of jobs, which are skilled trades? Canada is always looking for skilled trades and skilled work, skilled trade workers in these various fields. If you're a butcher, if you're a baker, if you're a chef, if you're a cook, if you do electricals, if you do construction, you know, there's constantly looking for this type of um, workers. So if you have experience in any of these, then you will select yes or no. No, I do not have any experience in any of these. I'm going to say none. And we'll go next. So here it's going to ask you how much money in Canadian dollars will you bring to Canada? Now I will explain to you in a different video proof of funds because you have to have a particular amount of money based on um, if you're coming to Canada alone or if you're coming with a spouse or children or whatever is the case. Um, but for now, if you're coming on your own, you can just select this, this amount, 12,960 to 16. Just select here if you're coming on your own. If you're coming with someone else, select the second range. Okay, how many family members do you have? I'm coming, let's say you're coming on your own, you say one. Or if you're coming with someone else, you say two. So I'm going to go ahead and say one just for this um, example. Then we say next. Then we're going to ask you, do you have a bad job offer in Canada? I will say no, because I don't have any job. I didn't have any job offers before I came here. So I'm going to select no. If you don't have any valid job offers, say no. Next. Then it's going to ask you for your date of birth. We're just going to go ahead and select any arbitrary dates of birth here let's see october 10. now it's going to ask you about your highest level of education for which you have earned a degree diploma or certificate in canada if you have not obtained it in canada you would need an educational credential assessment which i will explain in another video but we're just gonna go ahead here and say that we yes we we have done it for now because basically we just want to find out if we're eligible based on the things that we're going, we plan to do or we're going to do. So here you just select what degree, level of degree that you have. Here I'm going to select bachelor's degree. Next. Okay. We're on the final leg of the questionnaire. 
so it's going to tell you check all that i apply i have studied full-time in canada no i have not i have at least two years of full-time work experience in canada i do not i have a relative in canada it's 18 years or older you can say yes or no for this one if you have relatives here if you have worked here if you have studied here i'm gonna say none of the above so we go next then it's going to ask you what is your marital status let's just select never married single if you're coming if your spouse or whoever you say married common law whatever is the case okay then you say next all right so now it has given us our results with the results it's given us this reference code for now we can ignore this reference code because what this reference code does is um when you actually create your express entry profile you can select this reference code and it will pull from this reference code some of the answers that you placed in the questionnaire and pre-fill it in your express entry profile but since we were just doing like an arbitrary thing to see if we were actually eligible we do not need to take um this reference code too seriously right now when we actually do our english language test and our credential assessment and have the correct information and then and come back here and redo this eligibility questionnaire and actually save this reference code for when we're applying to our express entry right okay so right here it will give you your results it says based on your answers you appear to be eligible yay we are eligible and then it will give you different steps that you can well the next steps in applying for express entry but we cannot follow these steps right now because we have other things to do before we can actually sign up to create our express entry profile which i will explain in the next steps of the english language test and the eca right so now that we found out we are eligible, go to the next video and you will see what is your next step.